what is up YouTube welcome back to the channel everybody thank you guys so much for tuning in on today's video I got some behind the scenes updates going on first off and then we are gonna get into a kind of a how-to video um, how I go through the process of doing something uh, when we're going back together so 11 o'clock in the morning I said screw it pulled the engine out of this freaking tow pig um, we are gonna go ahead and go through and do the studs it did have blown head gasket um, let me see if I can show you guys here. Oh boy. As you can see here, this was, I believe, the passenger side. This spot right here is definitely blown. I believe this was number five cylinder. Um, it was blown on both sides. Um, you can kind of see up here again. So that was number five cylinder. Definitely had blown head gaskets in the truck. So when we sent the heads out, one side was cracked, one side wasn't. And if you guys know about how much those heads cost, it's about $1,000 through Ford to get a replacement head. Uh, luckily, I had a set of 20 millimeter dowel pin uh, heads here and in the barn. We sent those out. Those came back. Those checked out good. So I'm going to kind of go over the differences between the 18 and the 20 mils, um, the different rocker boxes, injector hold downs. There's a few different changes when you go to the 20 mil versus the 18 millimeter uh, head. So I'm going to go over all of that as well as how I prep the block on these trucks um, to make sure that they're nice and clean before you put on your before you install the studs and put on your heads it's very very important uh, because we don't want to go back into this we don't want to tear this engine down this far again so so while the tow pig is down we went ahead and installed some rear airbags so yeah, we got some rear airbags installed for the tow pig. Uh, pretty exciting. I really like the idea of the airbag system on the rear of this truck um, since it's going to be kind of our tow truck, tow vehicle, toting around the race truck. Um, really any projects and stuff like that, when we go pick up a new truck, we have ability to tow it and uh, get it home, especially because we all know they're probably not going to run when I buy them. So. so now we're going to go ahead and get into today's video and what today's video is all about, which is proper block preparation stud installation preparation pretty much everything you need so that when you put your heads back on you know that the block is ready to go you know the heads are ready to go and you're not going to blow another head gasket unless something catastrophically fails or one of the heads crack so this side is pretty much done we might clean this up a little bit more um, but it's really really smooth there's yeah i might clean that up a little bit more in there but um take a look at this side real quick this side's pretty much done and we'll go over here to this side which you can tell is not even been touched yet so so the first thing that i start off by doing is i get some wd-40 and i just go ahead and just spray the block surface down now what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to scrape this surface without really scratching the surface um, i'm going to be using a razor blade to clean this off so it's going to allow me to kind of it's going to add a little bit of lubricant as i cross over this surface but it's also the wd-40 is going to help lift up some of the particles that are on the block surface it's going to help lift those off um, and help clean this up a lot more so so like i said we're just going to be using a razor blade to clean this up um, you don't need a lot of pressure to do this. I'll kind of demonstrate real quick. Just kind of scrape it. And you can kind of, a lot of this is by feel. You can see we're pulling that gunk right off. Always have a clean rag with you that we can dab that off and then get right back into it. Sometimes you got to go over it a couple of times. You can kind of hear the grit that's on there. So you'll kind of hit that a little bit more until you feel that it's nice and smooth. So I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse. We're gonna go ahead and clean up this side. So before we move on to the next step, I wanted to mention real quick, I put these rags in there just because we don't want really anything to go down into our lifter um, because that would be bad. 
all of these little coolant passages we don't want debris to go down into the coolant passages you will get a little bit that's why when you go back with the truck back together with the truck you need to do a coolant flush on it um, just because of all the little bit of debris that will go into these coolant passages um, just try to be aware that you don't want debris to go down into here you don't want debris to go into these coolant passages so um, just something to keep in mind so now once we're here the main point of the razor blade is mainly just to get all of the big stuff off so now you can see it's relatively smooth we've gotten all of the caked on you know soot and compression and combustion all that crap off of the engine block so now what we're going to do is we're going to clean up a lot of this staining so the staining is slightly raised um, on this surface so we want to clean that up as best as we can kind of like we did on this side so as you can see over here a lot of the staining cleaned up some of it will stay that's some deeper stuff um, but the biggest point or objective is to make sure that this surface is nice and flat and smooth so what i do now is i'll grab my wd-40 again and i will spray this again just like that take your scotch bright pad which you see here and basically all i'm going to do is just kind of scrub on this front surface here now you don't want to use like a 3m disc pad um, you don't want to use anything that's too abrasive this is not abrasive enough this is not going to take off material all it's going to do is take off some of this staining so like i said don't use those 3m pads um, they're not they're not meant for this because you will form these little tiny lines because they will take off material so So now we're starting to look like that other side um, really cleaned up pretty pretty nice here if you do have blown head gaskets this will be a, look a little more like this um, versus I can usually get these a lot cleaner but some of this staining is pretty in there so I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on these I will go back over with the razor blade get a new razor blade that's what I always do <clears throat> I'll put a new razor blade on the end um, go back over this nice and easy Make sure I got all of the grit off of the block um, and then what I'll do is we'll go on to using some brake clean and making sure there's no oil, residual oil on this block. So a um, little bit of brake clean. We're all done with the WD-40 now, so we can put this away. But we're going to go back over with a new razor blade. And then we'll get some brake clean. We'll clean this up even more, get the scotch brake pad going again, and we'll see if we can't get this even clean. So what I like to do at this point is I will get the shop vac out and I will vacuum out the center of these cylinders and then I'll just kind of go over these cooling passages. That'll help get a lot of the fuzz that we kind of created and a little bit of those, a uh, little bit of flakes that go in down into there. Um, that'll vacuum out of there. And now what we're gonna wanna do is take our compressed air. And we're gonna wanna blow out all of our bolt holes or our soon to be stud holes. We'll just take our air gun and blow out these holes. We'll get a rag, put it over that. Um, and we just wanna make sure that all of these are nice and dry and cleaned out. Sometimes I'll even spray brake clean down in there and blow it out like that. This is gonna ensure that the, that the studs screw in properly, but it's also gonna make sure that we get a proper torque on these and that the, the stud isn't hydrolocked down inside of the hole. So very, very important. Let's go ahead and spray them out. All right, so that is pretty much all we're gonna do for our block prep. Everything is good to go. We blew out all of the holes and then we went over with the vacuum, made sure everything was cleaned up and really nice. Um, and then we also took a clean, nice rag, brand new rag, sprayed a little bit of brake clean and then just wiped the surface down. That's gonna ensure that the surface is nice and dry. There's no oil, residual oil 
on the surface. It's a nice, clean block, flat surface. So um, the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be getting ready to install our head studs. Um, but before we go ahead and put the head studs in, I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about the 18 and 20 millimeter heads and block and everything like that. So if you have a truck between 03 and I think even 06, um, into 06, you potentially have what they have is an 18 millimeter. So that's going to be the smaller end right here. So that's going to mean that your dowel pin is 18 millimeter that goes into the block and then it goes into the head. And that's what lines up the head when you set it down. There's two of them on each side. So 06 and a half and up to 07, they go to a 20 millimeter dowel pin, which is what you see here. Now, when you order a new head from Ford, they will only come as 20 millimeter, I believe. And what that means is, is they, you need this adapter fitting here. So what this adapter dowel is, is it goes from the 18 millimeter block to the 20 millimeter head. Um, so that's what we're going to be utilizing because we have 20 millimeter heads going on our 18 millimeter block. So we're going to be using these dowels to make that switch over to the 20 millimeter. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and I don't know as far as when you order these from Ford, if there is a variance or if you can order them by VIN, I don't know. But I know for a fact that these sets of heads that I have here are 20 millimeter and they came off of another truck. I had to make sure that I had the exact same rocker boxes for these heads, um, as well as the injector hold downs. The, these 20 millimeter heads actually switch to a T45 hold down instead of a T40. And then as far as your rocker box to head bolts, instead of an M8 bolt, I believe it goes up to an M10 bolt, um, which bolts the rocker box to the head. We're not concerned about those guys. Let's be honest, you have all the head studs pushing and holding that rocker box to the head. The main reason I think that they had those bolts there was because was to help with alignment on reassembly because the way Ford wants us to do it is to put the rocker box on first, torque those bolts, and then put your head on and then put the bolts in. Well, we're not using bolts, we're going to studs and it's gonna be much more reliable. Now, if you have the bolts, you should use them, but we're not gonna be able to use those bolts in this case because we switched over to the 20 millimeter heads, which take the bigger bolts um, and we, don't, we just don't have them. But it's not that big of a deal, I promise. It's not a big deal. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get these installed, and then we're gonna get our ARP head studs uh, prepped for installation. I'm gonna go over what I do when I'm prepping those for installation, and then we will go over the head prep, and we'll start setting our heads up. All right, so a lot happening right there. We put our dowel pins in and then we put our head studs in. I go all the way down, I tighten them all the way down. I make sure there's no fluid in there, of course. Tighten them all the way down. ARP says go finger tight and leave them and then go ahead and move on. Um, what I like to do is I'll go all the way down. I'll kind of give them a, just a little bit of a twist with the, with the wrist on a ratchet and that should kind of snug them up. And then what I'll do, once they're all snug, I'll go back through and I'll back each one off a, about a quarter of a turn. Um, what that's going to allow this to do, it's going to allow the stud to spin a little bit inside of the block, where if this was all the way down, the stud would not be able to rotate. And what can actually happen is the stud will try to rotate, and if it doesn't have any space in there, um, it will actually crack your block. Um, because when you do when you torque these these studs do move a little bit So we're allowing we're giving it a little bit of space to move in there. Um, we still have ample amount of thread um, Engagement going on right here. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our head gaskets. So That's right guys. We are gonna be using Velcro So these head gaskets are for your 20 millimeter dowel pin 
uh, six hole power stroke. And the reason I'm going with Felpro, I've used Felpro in so many other trucks. The race truck has Felpro head gaskets. These head gaskets are, they're just a little bit better quality than Ford OEM. Ford OEM is definitely a good quality um, head gasket as well as male. Um, I believe it's how you pronounce it, but Felpro is a little bit thicker. They use a little bit different of an RTV versus uh, Ford. Never had a failure with these head gaskets. So this, was, you know, they're a little bit cheaper than Ford too. And um, they're, they're just a quality, quality head gasket. And that's why we're going with them. So um, we're gonna go ahead and open these up and I'm gonna kind of go through. I've only ever had one issue with Felpro head gaskets and it's not necessarily Felpro's fault could be the people who shipped it to me I normally all of these parts guys TNA diesel Marshall Michigan that's where I get them all they hook me up they know exactly what I need so I'll leave that information down in the description as always I pull with one hand that's your 20 millimeter dowel pin part number yeah. They changed up the wrapping actually a little bit. They're wrapping them a little bit nicer. Probably because of the one problem that I had. So, normally they just come in this little plastic piece and they're in between the two cardboards. They don't normally come with that. So, I wonder if they changed it up because what I've had happen, and this is something you're going to want to inspect, mainly around where the head is going to be sealing for the head gasket, you want to make sure this RTV is in good shape. We want to make sure we want to inspect both sides to make sure that it's in good shape which this one is in good shape probably because they switched up their packaging um, so now when we go in and install these you can see our part number is right there so this is going to designate that the part number is always going to face up so we're going to go ahead and slide our head gasket on Sometimes it takes a little bit of persuasion to get over the studs here. There she goes. And then when we come down to the bottom here, it's gonna slide right over our dowels because we have the correct head gasket. Just like that. And just like that. One's on there too. So nothing too crazy, just mainly inspecting the head gasket uh, before you put it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one thrown on and then we'll move on to prepping our heads. All right, so we have our beautifully machined heads here. Um, like I said, these are the 20 mils that I had laying around. He was able to uh, make sure they didn't have any cracks in them. What we're gonna do before we get these on is we're gonna take some of our brake cleaner. We're just gonna hit these head surfaces up real good. Again, we don't want any residual oil on on these heads so we'll get our brake clean going then we'll just grab our air that these heads are ready to go on so these five bolts right here are the ones that go up top I like to have these handy and what I'll do is I'll have the bolts close by and I'll set the head on and then I'll start those bolts up top just get them going with your finger that way we know the heads not gonna be moving even though we've seated it on these dowels we're just gonna make sure so um, we're gonna have those ready and handy Make sure, so if we look at this head here, this side is plugged and this side is open. That's gonna be our fuel inlet port. That's where the banjo bolt will go. So when we set this head on, this one is gonna be our driver's side head uh, over here and that one will be on the other side. Um, best way to tell, like I said, that's where our fuel goes in is that fuel port right there. The other side is plugged.
to the rocker box installation. Um, these are the rocker box gaskets. You're gonna need two of these. Um, obviously one for one each side. Always replace these guys. Do not skimp out, do not cheap out. Just replace them. That way we know that this sucker is not gonna leak because if it does leak and you gotta go back in there and repair it, you're gonna have to pull the rocker boxes, which means you have to pull your head studs out. So, um, and replace the head gasket again. So just go ahead and replace these. Um, once we get these on, which these are doweled as well, uh, right here. See the one there and the one there. So this will dowel up to our head. And then like I said, normally you would have a handful of bolts, which are these ones right here, um, that would secure the rocker box to the head, or to, yeah, to the head. But in this case, because we are running the 20 millimeter, we would actually need the bigger M10 bolts, not the M8s, which are what those are. Um, so in that case, we're not gonna run those bolts. Not a big deal. Like I said, guys, we have all of this head stud action going on that's gonna be compressing that rocker box to everything. And it's easily gonna be able to make that seal, so. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our valve bridges in, which you see right here. That's how they're all gonna look, or that's how you want them to look with the numbers. They're all gonna look uh, how they should, which is the numbers up, obviously, like that. Um, so they're all gonna line across, connecting our intake and our exhaust valves um, across. So both our intake and then both of our exhaust. Now, we are gonna be switching to 6.4 liter push rods. The 6.0 and 6.4 push rod um, is the same part number now. So the 6.0 push rods have been updated so that you run the 6.4 push rod. The reason you run the 6.4 push rod is because when you go through this process, you take so many thousandths off of the head when you get it machined. This is what's gonna make up for it. So these are actually a little bit shorter than your 6.0, your factory 6.0 push rod. So that's why we run these. It's gonna help keep the strain off of the lifters and the valve train. So very important that we do these. Silver tip goes down just like that. And then once we have these in, we will move on to putting our rocker arms on and get, getting to torquing. Real quick thing too, guys, before I get too carried away, um, some guys, I, I think it's mainly when you install these, if you don't get them seated down into the lifter, you can have this problem. So um, just get a little flashlight, make sure that all of these are seated into the lifter, um, that we don't have any issues with bending push rods or nothing like that. In, in theory, the valve should never have any ability to contact the head. So um, I always think, it's got to be somebody not putting these in correctly. So just make sure that those are in there correctly and that they're seated on the lifter. So once we get all of these in, we are going to just go ahead and grab these uh, rocker arm assemblies. Um, we can go ahead and get those swapped back on, get them just kind of a little, little bit hand tight, and then we will move on to uh, getting our ARP lube going and torquing these, these heads. All right, so we are at the point of using our ARP torque lube and lubing everything up. At this point, we have not torqued a single thing. These are all just, you know, they all are started but not tight all the way yet. Um, if you do have those bolts, they would be up in this vicinity. Some of them have them down here as well. Um, but like I said, in this case, we're not gonna be doing that. So we are gonna now utilize this fantastic torque assembly lube and we're gonna just hit up the threads a little bit and then we will uh, lubricate both sides of our washer here and stick each washer on each one. And then the final thing that I like to do is I will put a little bit inside of here and on this surface and then I will thread these on. Um, I'll go around and I will tighten all of those by hand first. So I'll, do, I'll follow the torque sequence which is starts here in the center and I will just make them nice and hand tight just so that I know where they are. And then I will start the torque sequence, which three different torque sequences, um, 210 is the final. So we'll do 70, 140, and then our final torque of 210 following the provided piece here. And then you also see they have a torque for up top there as well, which are these bolts on top. Uh, so we will be torquing those as well, of course. And then once we get through with that, then we can do our final torque on these bolts here and then we will be done. Our heads will have been on and torqued down. We will seat that head gasket, let that 
uh, that silicone spread out a little bit and really make a good tight seal. So let's get started. We're gonna start lubing some stuff and get it on. So there it is, that's our final torque, 210 foot-pounds. That's gonna seal everything up. We're not gonna have a head gasket problem unless one of these heads decides to give way and end up cracking, which with for what we're using the truck for, I don't really see that ever happening. So um, the next thing we're gonna do, just to kind of wrap things up, is you're gonna wanna put your injectors in, obviously with new seals, or if you got new injectors, lube that stuff up before you put it in, torque those down, obviously, uh, 24 foot-pounds on those, and then, we're also gonna be, we're gonna run these the rest of the way down and torque those to 23 foot pounds on those, um, as well as the ones that go up here if you have those. And then the only other thing would be our glow plugs, 10 foot pounds on the glow plugs, guys. That's gonna pretty much seal everything up underneath here um, from being able to get down into the engine. And then at this point, now you're just, you're gonna put your oil rail back on, your updated standpipes and dummy plugs, um, and then your valve cover, of course. So. So trying to keep the video uh, relatively short here, but um, that's how I do all the trucks um, that I work on and everything I do. Whenever I do the bulletproof process, that's the process I go through. Um, it is very time consuming. I started around probably about four o'clock today um, and it's reaching, it's close to about seven now. So from the point of cleaning your head, uh, or I mean cleaning the block, making sure that it's nice and dry and clean, cleaning out the holes, um, making sure the head gasket doesn't have any issues. Make sure you get the 18, make sure you know what you got. Um, and then set your head on there, make sure the head is surface is nice and clean. Make sure you send them out and then uh, get your stuff on. Go to the 6.4 push rods, guys. And yeah, just, just be very thorough and clean and neat. That's, that's the key with this, um, whenever you're doing this process. So uh, this is the method that I found that works the best. I'm the most satisfied with it at the end of the day. Um, so that when I go home and I put the, this engine in this vehicle, I know that it's not going to have a head gasket problem because I was that thorough in my block prep, my cleaning process, and making sure that everything is nice, clean, neat, dry, and that's what it's all about. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped a lot of people out there. I know this has been a common problem. There's a lot of different methods out there. There's a lot of right ways and a lot of wrong ways. Um, and this is one of the right ways, and I think this allows you to be very meticulous in the way that you work uh, and do this process. So thank you guys so much for tuning in on this video. Stay tuned. We're going to be putting this engine back into the tow pig. We got some race truck updates, some things happening there. Very exciting, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure if you guys are new, subscribe. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Give me your guys' thoughts. And as always, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.